Hey guys, so in today's video I'm just going to go through some books that I own that I think are really really helpful for artists, whether it be how to draw, how to color, how to paint, stuff like that. And I only have a few books out of the like millions of books that are out there, so I'm sure there are so many good ones that you won't see featured in this video. So if you know of one that's amazing, leave a comment, say what book it is, and maybe it'll help someone else out. So I'll just show you the ones I have and that I think are really helpful. So first up, the Atlas of human anatomy for the artist. This was actually a textbook that I had to get for school. It was for my life drawing class because I went to school for 3D animation and we had to take three life drawing classes and this was one of the books we had to get. And it is a super helpful anatomy book. So my favorite thing about this book is the really clear drawings. It's got some nice bright highlights, nice dark shadows so that you can really, really see the form of these different bones and muscles and stuff. It's just really, really well done. Also, it, they really break down the joints is what I really like and I think about this all the time if I can hop open to the page I'm trying to get to sticky notes not helping for example here are a bunch of different joints and like a hinge would be the elbow joint ball and socket is your hip joint and it's really helpful to think of these things when you're drawing and there's also pages that just uh, they kind of showcase all the different ranges of movement and just things to think of like Think of a shovel shape when you're thinking of the shoulder blade and just, I don't know. These are really, really helpful diagrams. These are my favorite pages in the entire book just because it's cool to see things broken down and simplified. And these are the things that stick in my mind and that I remember from this book. So I'll just do a bit of a flip through. Just give you an idea of the content of the book. So yeah, that is the Atlas of Human Anatomy for the Artist. And I would say the thing I don't like about this book is there's not much in terms of photographs. There's, it's mostly drawings, which obviously you kind of need because it's bones and muscles. It's not like, yeah, you just don't find actual pictures of that a lot unless you're looking at an anatomy book for like medical students or something. So that's kind of cool, but I wish there was more photographs of surface anatomy. There are some in the back, but they're not the clearest and there's just not enough in my opinion. Also, this book focuses on male anatomy. Throughout the entire thing, it's all male anatomy until the end, pretty much, where there's some pictures of females for surface anatomy in the back. But I feel like it's not enough. Because yes, we all have the same muscles and same bones, but we're still structured differently. You know, we have the same parts, they're just different proportions. And so I feel like there could have been more female anatomy in this book. And that brings me to the next anatomy book, which I randomly stumbled across in chapters. It's called Anatomy for the Artist by Sarah Simblett. And this one has equal representation of males and females, which I really, really like. So this one is, I wouldn't say more helpful, but it's just helpful in a different way than that book. All right, so let's take a look inside. So it kind of breaks everything down by section like most anatomy books but it's got a lot of real life photographs and it actually has these overlays as well. It's a transparent sheet and you can see the bones and later on muscles overlaid on top of the surface, which is super, super helpful. I think that's a really unique feature of this book. It's really helpful too. And then you get your sketches, there's photos, and then there's just more, like there's a bunch of different expressions. And then these pages, these pages I love. They'll do a two page spread with many examples of whatever that section is. So here's a bunch of heads and they have a variety of races, a variety of genders and black and white photos as well as color photos. So it's just a really nice spread. So here's just another example of the torso and it shows front and back simultaneously, again with the overlay and your drawings and then the spread. This is one of my favorite pages, the torso spread page. It's just so helpful. It's it's just, I love this book. It's amazing. So it goes through different body parts, obviously. And then they even have these cool uh, movement pictures here. These are really neat. Just to kind of, you know, see the body in different forms of movement, different extremities. And they also have these master classes, which I don't really care much for these, but they'll take a painting, like a popular painting, and they'll kind of recreate it and just break it down. That's kind of cool. I'm not that interested in those, but just so you know it's there. So I really, really love this anatomy book a lot. So this next book is one I actually saw featured by another YouTuber and I went and bought it right away. I was just like, where were you all my life? This book is exactly what I needed. 
It's called Color and Light, A Guide for the Realist Painter by James Gurney. And this, oh my gosh, cake is anatomy and then color and lighting is the stuff I struggle with the most. So when I saw him talk about this book, I, was, I ran to Amazon and bought it right away. I was like, ah. so, oh gosh, this book is amazing. It does say creator of Dinotopia. So there are a lot of dinosaur drawings in this. So if you're not a big fan of dinosaurs, I don't know if you'll like it or not, but it's still really helpful. So let's just kind of skip to my tabbies here. This covers so many different topics, it's ridiculous. You got your basic direct sunlight, you've got your overcast light, window light, candlelight and firelight, indoor electric light, street lights and night conditions, luminescence, hidden light sources. Here it's talking about cast shadows. Yeah, lots of dinosaurs. <laughs> There's just so many different topics covered, it's amazing. Here we've got examples of subsurface scattering. If you don't know what that is, you need to know. Color zones of the face. The hair secret, what? Specular reflections, highlights, color corona, motion blur, atmospheric perspective, reverse atmospheric perspective. Like so much is covered in this book. What I like about this book is there's a lot of paintings in it that are used as examples. This guy has done a lot of paintings. He knows his stuff. But it's also nice to see real life photographs of some of these principles he's talking about. So I'd say that's one of the cons is it's almost exclusively paintings. I wish there were more, like maybe even just one real life photograph for each example he shows. Because for each topic, for like if you go to cast shadows, there's maybe two pictures for examples for cast shadows. I wish there were more pictures. So if you tossed in some real life photographs, I can't even say photographs. If you tossed in some real life photographs, I think that would help out a lot. Although the book's already pretty thick. so. It you know, they probably couldn't include too many examples because it'd just be way too big of a book, but I just kind of felt like I wanted more examples of each subject. But that aside, this book is ridiculously amazing. I actually haven't had that much time to practice a lot of the stuff. I've read through most of it, but I haven't had time to put a lot of it into practice. That's how I feel about a lot of my books though. I have all these amazing books and then I feel like I don't have the time to just sit down and use them. But Someday if I do just art for a living, that'll be like a miracle and I can take the time and really, really learn my stuff because these books are just too good. So this next book is actually a set of books by the same company and many of you will already know about this, but they are the Imagine FX books. So these two here are part of their monthly magazine subscriptions. I actually don't have a subscription. I've been meaning to, but when I first discovered this magazine, I was in school, so I was broke, and I would read them in the school library. And then after I graduated, I was still poor because I didn't have a job. But now that I'm more more financially stable, I guess, I, I need to get on that. Like I'll probably do that after I stop filming this video, is go subscribe to Imagine FX. It's kind of a more expensive magazine, but they're they're really, really good magazines. They focus mostly on digital painting, but they do incorporate stuff about traditional art. And a lot of this, the principles you learn translate across all mediums, so I still find it helpful. And I do want to break into digital painting, I just need more time, like I've said. So each one will focus around some kind of topic, like this issue was fantasy book illustration, this one was pinup art, and there's just really cool stuff in here. They've got a gallery at the beginning featuring different artists, which is also always fun to look through. They've got tutorials, they've got tips and tricks. It's just amazing. I, I don't know, I can't get enough of these books. It's probably one of the best magazines out there in terms of content for artists. It's really hard to find magazines for artists unless it's like a crafting or knitting magazine or something. So these are amazing. And in the back, they also have, well, somewhere in here, this is like a traditional art section in this book. They do tech reviews in the back, maybe not of this one because it's a traditional art section. It might have been earlier on in that one, but they'll just kind of review different things like new tablets, new pens, maybe cameras, books that have come out. It's just a good variety of stuff. Anything an artist is interested in is in this book. Then we have pretty much my favorite spread in the entire books. I love the tips and tricks sections, but they feature artists' workstations. So this is one artist, Loopy Dave, and it goes over his workstation, he says stuff about it, there's pictures, there's one here, Will Mirai, and I don't know, I just love seeing people's workstations in here, so this is really cool. 
So Imagine FX has their monthly magazine subscriptions, but they're always coming out with specialty magazines and I just want to buy them all. Just take all my money. So this one's an actual book. It's called uh, Fantasy Workshop. And again, yes, it's focused on digital art, but so much of this is so useful just for traditional art, just for reference and stuff. So for example, there's things like paint a realistic ear. I can't hold it like this. I need to put it back on the ground. Oh, painting the lips, same picture kind of thing. Uh, kind of how to do hair. There's just a lot of tutorials and awesome stuff. It's so helpful because they, they assemble artists from all over the world and say, hey, you want to do a tutorial for our book or for our magazine? And so you get all kinds of experience, all kinds of styles of art. And so, yeah, that's really awesome. Also by Imagine FX, they have this anatomy book. So this one is How to Draw and Paint Anatomy by Imagine FX. And again, it's kind of got the gallery in the beginning and then it's got tutorials and they do a similar thing to that other anatomy book I was showing you, the one by Steven Rogers Peck, is that they break it down into simple shapes like your pecs, it's fan shaped and think of a coat hanger for up here, like for the shoulder area and just, it's, it's really helpful. I'll just do kind of your quick flip through. They also have a bunch of animal anatomy in here, which you don't normally get. It's just barely scratching the surface, but it's great for beginners and people like me who don't have experience drawing animals. It's really, really helpful. I keep saying that this is helpful, that is helpful. All of it is helpful. It's the word of the day. Here are two more of Imagine FX specialty magazines. This one's pretty thick. This one's a little thinner. So this one's structured just like their monthly magazines, except it's a lot longer. And uh, let's see what I bookmarked here. Oh yeah, <laughs> James Gurney, the guy from there. I was flipping through this and I'm like, hey, dinosaurs. Hey, it's that guy. Same guy who did the color and light book. I thought that was funny. I'll just do a quick flip through on this. They also give you Photoshop brushes, which is cool. So that was one focused on fantasy art. This one is thinner. It's more like a regular issue, but it's still a specialty issue. Digital painting. And my favorite part of this one is this tutorial section in the back. If I can get to it, my sticky notes are not as helpful as I thought they would be. But. It's how to depict different clothes and materials. So you got your satin, your velvet. Just looking at this for reference, no matter what medium you're using, is really helpful. Because like, like I mentioned, real life photographs are helpful, but it's also sometimes helpful to see how that's translated into a painting. You got your feathers, plaid skirts. This trick is mostly for digital art, the way they, they give you a tip on how to warp straight lines so it looks a little more natural. Got your chiffon, your denim, wool knitted textiles, armor, latex, jewels and metals and laces and oh my goodness, so much here. This is my favorite section out of probably all my Imagine FX books. So yes, any Imagine FX books are awesome. So yes, those are my babies. So this next book is geared towards people who like to use markers. Specifically Copics is what they touch on, but really it applies to any markers. So I got this at Michael's, it's called Shoujo Wonder Manga Art School. And everything's done in Copics, and I absolutely love her coloring style. I actually forgot I had this book, so I was pulling out all the books I wanted for this video, and I picked this one at last. I'm like, oh crap, I forgot I even had this book. It's so good. First off, her drawing style is just so cute. And just her use of colors is amazing. And I love how she does different skin tones and stuff. We'll get to that. So it goes over materials, there's color swatches for the Copics, and kind of her drawing process, different techniques you can use with your markers. This one is so beautiful. And she made use of the whole colorless blender thing like I've done many times in my videos. And this book's not even just about coloring, it's also about drawing as well, so it gives you those tips. I'd say the main focus is coloring, but you still get a decent amount of drawing tutorials as well. See, here is my reason why I need so many books. It says Basics of Light. This is one page. And so this is why I need a whole book dedicated towards light is because you can't cover everything in one page, but this book covers so many topics that that's as in depth as they could go, really. There's no room in the book to go more in depth than that. So this is why we artists want so many books. 
I love how they go over different skin tones. Like here's a slightly more tanned skin tone. Here's like a gray skin tone. That is awesome. It also goes over some things like perspective. It goes over different topics, but I just love looking at the different ways she colors and just her use of color. Just, oh goodness. Oh goodness. This book is awesome. If you use Copics, get this book. So once again, that was Shoujo Wonder Manga Art School by this person. I'm not even going to try to pronounce that. So this next book is called The Watercolorist's Essential Notebook by Gordon McKenzie. And this gives you a lot of information if you're trying to get into watercolors. So it goes over your materials. It goes over colors. It goes over different brands of colors too, like what to expect with different popular brands. Goes over your brushes, your paper, how to stretch your paper, stuff about your palette that I wouldn't have even thought of. Just so much information and tips and tricks for your tools at the beginning. And then of course you've also got your lessons. So I'm just gonna do a quick flip through of this book to kind of give you an idea of what it's like. This is such beautiful artwork too. So yeah, if you're trying to get into watercolors, I definitely recommend this book. So this last book on my list is for people trying to get into animation. I had to buy this, well, optionally, as one of my textbooks for school. It's called All About Techniques in Drawing for Animation Production. And it's it's not so much how to animate as it is how to draw for animation. This does give some animation tips and tricks, but it's more like how can you convey this trick through your drawing. So definitely not geared towards how to animate. Talks about setting up your own little studio storyboarding, composition. This is my favorite section, I think, is all the composition stuff. Setting up your scene. And this isn't just for animators even. I, I wouldn't recommend getting this if you're not into animation, but this can help you with just your still drawings, even if it's not for an animated piece. Goes over your different shots, over focal lengths of camera, different camera angles, just lots of cool stuff. How to construct your characters, posing the character, defining its form, bunch of cool tips and tricks, line of action, yada yada. Okay, now I'll do the flip through just to show you more of the pages. So yeah, those are the books I own that I think are super helpful. Like I said, there's so many more books out there. So if you know of a really good one that you think will be helpful for others, leave it in the video description. And yeah, I, I'd say if you're looking to get into some books, I would focus first on maybe getting some anatomy books. And then that color and light book is really helpful. And then some type of coloring book related to the medium you're using. But definitely, definitely anatomy is a huge one because we we all struggle with that, at least in the beginning. I still struggle immensely. So, yeah. Oh, that was loud. So those are the books I own that I like, and I'm glad I finally got to share those with you guys. I also have a lot of art of books, so I might do a video on those in the future, like art of Avatar The Last Airbender, the art of Tangled, art of Spirited Away. So maybe you'll see more books in the future, but this was just instructional or helpful books for artists so hope this was helpful thanks for watching <laughs> why am i getting all strap my arms down <laughs> thanks for watching and i'll see you guys in the next video